So, I played this closed beta test of a game called The First Descendant. It's a third-person shooter published by Nexon, who makes a lot of MMO and mobile games. I simply put in my email through a link on Steam and got an invite. Great. Some Destiny YouTubers were also streaming it, and it piqued my interest. I had recently become tired of Outriders and their stupid world tier system, so this was kind of what I wanted. This game is nothing new, but it is a pretty well executed looter shooter. I started my game, picked the girl with the ice powers, and went through a small tutorial level. I used a controller during my playthrough, because the game had support for it, but the tutorial pop-ups were still for keyboard. It's your typical control scheme. Melee was hold left bumper while pressing the right bumper, which is weird. And then clicking the stick isn't melee, it's expose enemy weak points. Also, your various skills use mana. They are executed with the left bumper and a face button. It's a bit awkward, but I got used to it. The evasion roll is really long and has lots of distance, which I like. It felt a little short in Outriders. You have a grappling hook and a double jump, which makes traversal fun, except for most of the areas are deserted with nothing to find, and most of the areas have invisible walls, which make the areas a lot more linear than you think. You first get to the central city, find the vendors like weapons, runes, the quest counter mailbox, and quest NPCs. From the hub world, you select an area, you do some quests there, then return to the hub world for more tutorials and story progression. You level up, get guns of the usual rarities that use different types of ammo, equip runes that give you everything from attack up to lower cooldowns to elemental damage to everything you can imagine, and gain points towards mastery, which gets you more slots for runes and higher rune upgrades. Your runes are categorized into Storm, Torrent, Tide, Thunder, and Haze, which each apply to certain types of weapons. There may be other things to make your character stronger, but they weren't in my playtime. Okay, so just a few complaints about this beta test, which will probably be fixed by launch. Here's hoping. My PC was right at the recommended specs for the game, so it ran fine at 1080p60, at least at first. By the second major area, the frame rate tanked, and there was a little bit of lag near the end. Could be the game, could be my computer, I don't know. I ran out of ammo during a hard enemy encounter, and they kept giving me ammo for weapons that I wasn't using, so I had to run to a safe area and quickly equip a gun from my inventory that used an ammo type that was full at the time. They will need to fix this to make sure that only ammo for your equipped guns actually drops. There are some story bosses that aren't very hard, but they are so tanky. It takes forever to kill these things, running around in circles, pumping damage into them. A little bit overtuned, I think, so I finally got my character past level 9, and I was able to fight one of those big world bosses that you can challenge with a team of 4 in co-op. This fight was way too easy. The footage you are about to see is unedited. After that underwhelming battle, I got a lot of loot, and then I tried to leave the lobby early and the server disconnected. When I loaded back into the lobby, it was in first person for some reason. Like I said, it'll probably be patched, it's a beta test, so I'm not going to hold this against it. I had a really good time playing this. When I wasn't playing it, I wanted to go back and shoot a little bit more. It runs really well, it's really smooth with unlockable descendants, runes, currencies, and cosmetics soon to come, I'm sure there will be plenty to do and buy if you spend money on online games. I'm not sure when the actual release date is, but I could guess 2023. This game is going to be free to play, so give it a shot if it appeals to you. This is Dan T from Twisted Banana Productions, fast traveling out of here.